All right. Hi, everyone. I am super delighted to welcome you to our show, Caring for Your Pet. And this is where you can learn more about how to simply, easily, and compassionately keep your pet healthy and happy. My name is Burns Gala or Burns Berry, and today we'll be talking about herbs. I mean, how dried herbs and flowers can and yeah can help your cat to heal and using the energetics of herbs and having your cat to self-select. And joining us today is Julie Ann Thorne. She is a holistic cat therapist, an empath, and she's also an author and a cat behaviorist. She started Naturally Cats where she provides holistic help for cats and their guardians. And she uses environment enrichment, healing, soul connection, behavior modification, and botanical remedies. She also supports cats emotionally to reduce and remove problem behaviors. Her mission is giving cats a voice, which is why she helps educate feline guardians so their cats can thrive that, rather than simply survive. And uh, I love those lines. The key element of her work is really getting into the cat's perspective and reconnecting them with their guardian. So it's a marvelous work. Looks like we're going to have some a quite amazing conversation today. So without further ado, I bring you Julie Ann Thorne. Hi, Julianne. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much, friends. I am so happy to be here. And that's a fabulous introduction for me. I, I am one of those cat ladies that <laughs> we'll do everything I can to help people with their cats. And I'm really thrilled about our topic today, talking about herbs. It's going to be great. Awesome. And super awesome to have you here. And thank you very much for being part of this. And um, yeah, first off, can you share with us your journey and how you became a holistic cat therapist? Sure. So I, I've always had cats. We've always loved cats in our family. That's not to say that I don't like dogs at all. I just, we, we have always had cats. I've grown up with cats. And when I finished university after getting my psychology degree, I got my very first cat, my dear baby girl, Pickle. And she was my sole cat. There's no other way to describe it. We had a phenomenal connection and she inspired me so much. Sadly, she was very poorly. She had diabetes, arthritis, gingivitis, pancreatitis, IBS. You know, we, we went through a, a huge journey with her. And she was part of our lives for 13 years and she was put to sleep at the age of 17. And throughout that, throughout our time together, I wanted more help for her. So we would see our vet and I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the answers that I wanted. I wasn't getting the, the complete approach to her, her care that I wanted, that I craved. So to go alongside, to complement the veterinary care, I trained in different therapies, different modalities, which is what I've brought together today to bring to Naturally Cats. So as you mentioned, you know, the animal communication, healing, Reiki, uh, botanical remedies. I trained in all these different areas to try to help her heal and to try to help her more. And I decided to quit my corporate job 18 months ago and to do Naturally Cats full time to try to help more people. Because, you know, as you mentioned, my mission is giving cats a voice and you know I want to do that a full time I want to help people so that's that's where why I am you know where I am so far it seems kind of daunting and life-changing but uh, mm -hmm. yeah um, I'm interested to know how did you really how did you decide to take on such a major initiative did it scare you at some point or absolutely <laughs> <laughs> petrified <laughs> it um Naturally Cats had been, was created probably about eight years ago and it was a hobby, it was a passion, you know, and I wanted something that would give me a complete approach to care, you know, to use the veterinary, to use allopathic treatment, but also other elements as well. So when I decided to quit my corporate job, you know, it wasn't an easy decision, but I'd had physical discomfort. I'd had problems with my joints for, you know, three periods of long-term sickness and it was almost like the universe was trying to say to me, you know, you, this job is not good for you, like physically, you know, you, you can't handle this day job. So I kind of took a jump off a cliff and, and that's literally how it felt. It was that scary. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll have to make sure I swim when I get to the bottom. There, there was just, you know, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I trust that it will. And within, I think it was four weeks of quitting my corporate job, 
I was approached and asked to co-author the aromatic cat book. So if ever you need a sign or an indication that you've made the right choice, that that would be it. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, thank you for sharing your story. Sounds like uh, you're a visionary and it's very interesting how a cat has changed your life and now you're doing something that you're passionate about. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, can you share with us what is holistic cat therapy and how different is your holistic behavioral approach compared to the uh, traditional approach? Yeah, great question. So when I left my corporate job, I called myself a behaviorist because you know I'm a qualified behaviorist and that's what I thought people would understand, you know, and actually in, in the last 18 months, my title has evolved because I realized that when people come to work with me, it's mostly to do with a problem behavior or a behavior that, you know, has the, there's, there's issues in the house with. But what I realized is that I don't, I'm not a traditional behaviorist. So behavior is actually one of my tools. It's one of my approaches. It's one of my, um, one of the ways that I support the cat and their family, but it's not just that. So I, in my opinion, you know, a traditional behaviorist, if you like, is someone that will look at the behavior of the cat and then look to modify it. So, for example, if the cat is urinating outside of the litter tray, they will suggest potentially add a new tray, move it, you know, change the litter, etc. But for me, I do so much more than just looking at behavior, which is why I created and gave myself the title holistic cat therapist, because for me, holistic means that whole approach, you know, it's looking at the cat in its entirety. So it's not just its behavior, which is a physical you know, manifestation of, of an emotional cause, in my opinion. So I look at the emotional, the mental, the spiritual and the physical elements that affect a cat. So I might use a chakra cleanse on a cat. I might use some Reiki or some healing on the cat. I might use some crystal work. I might use behavior modification. It really depends what that cat needs and how they, they need that support within their family. So the title Holistic Cat Therapist came about because I'm, I'm not a one trick pony. You know, I've got different tools and different techniques to use to support all the elements of the cat. Wonderful. And sounds like a, something an empath would really do. It's like you're really diving deep into what the specific needs of yeah, the cat. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I'd like to talk about herbs. How can herbs be used for cat's healing and, and well-being? So herbs is my, my kind of passion project. So I when I trained to use botanical remedies, I was absolutely blown away. My, my world was rocked. I think it's safe to say it was one of those moments where you just look at, at, at what's going on in front of you and you're just shocked beyond belief. And I saw how when I was training, my tutor used dry herbs to support a feral cat mum and her kittens. Now she was being, the, the cat mum was being horrendously reactive. You know, she was protecting her babies. She wouldn't let the rescue workers into the room. And we kind of managed to sort of um, swish in on the floor, a blanket with some dried herbs on. And within less than 10 minutes, she was purring. And the rescue worker was able to go into the room, change the food, change the litter. So you know, herbs are, are an amazing tool that can work on, again, these four, four elements, these four perspectives of a cat, so the physical, the mental, emotional, and the spiritual health and well-being. And, and that's, I know that's the topic we're going to talk about today. So I, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'm, I've got a couple of slides that I want to share with everybody just because it helps to keep me on track because otherwise I can go off on a tangent. Um, but it's safe to say that herbs can be very, very powerful if we give our cats the opportunity to work with them. Wonderful. That's that's very interesting and quite a unique approach. But um, how do you use herbs to um, yeah for for a cat who needs yeah, healing in a specific way? So if you're happy that if you're happy for me to, I'm going to share my screen and start the presentation because the questions that you're asking me are the point of my presentation. So just give me one second. Sure. To get to get my screen up. All right. Um, and let's get into the talk. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, okay. So I'll answer your question in just a minute. Let me just get through my intro slides and I'll be right there answering your question about how to use herbs with cats. All right, wonderful. Okay, so the 
just to say the two books on the on the front cover here they're two books that I've co-authored so the first one is The Aromatic Cat and the second is, is How to Use Reiki with um with cats and dogs and horses and I was the cat specialist for that one so as you've mentioned I'm a cat mum um and uh I'm a holistic cat therapist intuitive and behaviorist I created Naturally Cats to help people so not just to help cats it's also to help their guardians to educate to to nurture and support their growth and understanding of how they can reconnect with their cat Mm -hmm. so today I wanted to talk about self-selection and as you said herbs so how can you use herbs to help your cat you know what what is it we can do to support their well-being and to use that holistic approach just in our homes you know this isn't uh, um this isn't a, a topic that you've got to be necessarily trained in. Anyone can try this with their cat. And I'm going to share with you guys today tips and tricks as to how you can try things and what you'd what to look for when you're working with your cat. All right. I'm excited. It's going to be great. OK, so let's just do a little bit of background. So here comes a little bit of education. So I talk about something called self-selection. And there is a kind of a fancy word for it, which is zoopharmacognosy. Now, that's a really long word. And actually, when you're trying to spell it, you know, on your phone, it autocorrects to some really crazy things. So zoopharmacognosy, it's the study of how animals will self-medicate. And this is self-medicate with medicinal compounds. So this isn't with food. You know, with food, there is a nutritional element. We get fat, we get protein, we get carbohydrate. This is different. So self-selection, you know, uh, a cat's not going to go and use a remedy because they're hungry. It gives them different things in their body. So that's one thing to remember. Now, applied zoo pharmacognosy is where we use this tool, this self-selection, to bring it into our homes, to allow our cats and dogs, but I'm going to talk about cats today because I am the cat lady. So um, this is where we can bring remedies, if you like, into our home and let our cats self-select, let them self-medicate. So if you break the word down, zoo pharmacognosy, it means animal remedy knowing. So zoo, animal, pharma, remedy, cognosy, knowing. And I just want to talk to you about the two pictures on here. So this is an ocelot. This was from one of my tutors. And she worked at a rescue center. Now, you know, despite this being a rescue center, this is essentially a wild animal. Okay, it wasn't born in captivity. And what you can see with the two pictures, the first one on the right hand side, it's catnip. So giant cat catnip. So as we all know, a lot of cats like catnip, but more on that later, because not all cats are actually affected by it. And the picture at the bottom, that red piece of fabric has got a rose hydrosol on it. So that's basically kind of like a rose water, if you like. When an essential oil is created, there are parts of that in the distillation process where you create a water that's got oil particles in it. So basically what you can see here is this this animal, this this um, this wild animal is using self-selection to heal itself. I mean, how fabulous is that? I, I, I just find it fascinating. It is. Yeah. So, so the reason I've shown this is because if we think about lions and tigers, you know, the, the, the wild cats, the big cats, feral cats, to our cats that live with us here in our homes, all of them can do it. In fact, there have been studies and there's a brilliant book called Wild Health by Cindy Angel. And she talks about how parrots will use certain clays to dust under their feathers to rid themselves of mites. She talks about how, I think it's goats or monkeys, will will eat certain parts of plants that generally, if you look at them uh, as they're in bud, they can be considered toxic, but only um, the monkeys will eat them when they've got a certain parasite. So again, it's to do with the medicinal properties of a remedy. It's not about having it for a nutrient value. Okay. So here's here's the question that you asked me a a few moments ago. So how how do you use herbs, right? How can herbs help? So in my approach, when I work with people in my community, you know, my clients, my my own cats, because I've got two cats, I've got two now, Max and Leo. When I work with my own cats and others, I use like a framework called the four paws to perfection. So I look at, as I mentioned before, the physical health, the mental health, 
the emotional health and the spiritual health. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at one in isolation, you're only going to get a certain amount of health or well-being or balance for your cat. Okay. So from my opinion, you need to look at the whole picture, which is why I class myself as holistic, because I will look at nutrition. I will look at the diet. I will look at the relationships with the cat and other animals and people in the home. I will look at the resources they've got, their physical health and well-being. You know, it is that whole picture. So herbs can help because this this holistic approach, because they will help different things in the body. So, for example, if you've got if you've got a particularly nervous cat and they go into the vets, you know, mm-hmm. I would recommend you try some rosebuds because rosebuds are really nurturing. So this cat's potentially got a mental health challenge of anxiety because they're going to the vets. The carriers come out. You've got it in the front room. The cat sees it and thinks, oh, I know what's going on here. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. rose is a really nurturing remedy. So it's going to help to calm that anxiety and bring that stress down. Whereas with valerian, valerian root, dried valerian root, that can help with physical pain. So if you've got a cat that's had an accident or it's had an operation, I would really recommend, you know, offering valerian root. And again, we'll come on to how you do that in a moment. And valerian root helps with physical issues, you know, physical pain. So you've got different herbs and flowers that will help different parts of the body. It will help different elements of of wellness, if you like. Mm -hmm. So we talked about physical, I've given you a physical example, I've given you an emotional example, but like I said, it also helps their mental health as well. So if we think about us as pet parents, as, as cat guardians, we've brought our cats inside. We've domesticated cats. You know, they haven't evolved to come and live with us and to use a puzzle feeder. You know, we, we've domesticated cats by bringing them in from outdoors. Right. So, you know, we force their evolution. Mm-hmm. Now, with that comes some challenges. You know, that's why you'll have some cats that, you know, will have issues with the litter box or you've got issues with food or, you know, they have they struggle to, to maintain inter, intercat relationships in the home, you know, multi-cat homes. So our cats, sadly, today face a lot of challenges. And what we've done as humans, and this isn't, you know, an intentional way that we've, that we've, um, you know, looked to kind of uh, upset the apple cart, if you like, Uh but we've taken away their control. We've taken away a cat's control over its environment. So even though, for example, my Leo, he does have access to outside, we shut the cat flap at nighttime because we back onto local woods and we want him to be safe you know, and not to get hurt by, by wild animals. So he can only come and go at times when we choose, you know, we put food down at certain times. So he only can eat, you know, obviously if we leave the plate down, but you know, you, you know, he's, he doesn't have control over all of his, all elements that affect him. Mm-hmm. And as we know, as humans, when you feel out of control, you can deal with panic. You can deal with anxiety. Some oh, people wow. affect some people more than others, you know, very much Sorry, ben. what did you say yeah very much yeah 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 so if we put down a herb garden which i'll talk about in just a minute it gives them some of that control back you know it gives them the capacity to self-soothe effectively so if they're stressed if they're not feeling a hundred percent because let's face it sometimes we get up i don't know about you and I might be a little bit clunky if I've done a bit too much the day before, or, you know, you're just not feeling, you're feeling great if it's rainy outside, you know, you don't always, you don't definitely not, you know, wake up every day and spring out of bed, you know, ready for the joys of the day ahead, yeah. so, you know? I agree, yes. Indeed. And, and cats are the same, right? So sometimes they might not be feeling 100%. Sometimes they might have the residual stress from a vet visit the day before or seeing the neighbor's dog in the in the driveway or whatever it may be. So if we put a herb garden down, it allows them to deal with themselves. It gives them control over their current state. And then finally, it boosts our interspecies connection. So as you said at the beginning, my mission is giving cats a voice and that comes in in twofold. So that's about speaking up for the cat and saying to their guardians, you need to do X, Y, and Z for your cat, or you're, if, through, if perhaps through an animal communication session, your cat shared with me this, they would like this crystal or this color blanket. But also it's about helping the guardians to 
reconnect with their cats, to see their cats as a sentient, emotional being and a unique one. Because just like every human, we're all different. Just like every cat, they're all different. So, you know, even if you've had cats before, the, the ones that you have now will be different to those. The relationship you have will be different. So by offering herbs, it enables us to, in a way, say to our cats, I see you. You know, I'm putting this down for you. I want to help you heal. And that in itself is, is a wonderful way to boost our connection with our cats. Any questions, Burns, before I go on? I am so mind blown. Um, I love everything you said. I mean, who would have thought that um, cats really do this uh, self-selection um, approach or, or method? And I never knew that this this is this can be done and this is possible. And it's, it's wonderful how we can really treat cats um, as really unique beings. And each and every one is really different. Each and every cat has its own personality, they have different behaviors, different preferences, and wow. Um, and uh, uh, for you guys in the audience, I hope you're getting value from this. I am. I'm also one of you guys and part of the uh, the audience, basically. And um, yeah, and uh, I, I'm loving, I'm learning a lot from this. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, the knowledge that you're sharing. And uh, it's really cool. My pleasure. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I can see yeah. that you're that you're kind of like really engrossed in the topic. Very much. Great. Yes, this is Great. totally new to me and it's marvelous. It's really um, impressive and I love what I'm hearing. <laughs> Good. Good. And I hope everyone in the audience is enjoying it as well. Yes. So this so this is a herb garden. Now, before I talk you through this, I just want to kind of give you a caveat that there is no replacement for veterinary care. You know, I worked very closely with my vet, with Pickle. And one of the first few vets that we had, you know, I learned a lot. As a cat mum, I learned that it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask for a second opinion. It's okay to ask for information. And I call myself a holistic, you know, holistic cat therapist, which means that whole approach. So I work very closely with my vet now, with Leo, and actually with Max. Um, so the treatments, the, the, the modalities that we talk about, you know, animal communication, herbs, remedies, it's not a replacement for veterinary care. It's complementary, you know, it's, it's complementary rather than alternative. So complementary means it works alongside, it works in tandem with. So if you've got any concerns about your cat, I would always recommend you get a vet check first, just to ensure there is no physical issue that needs medical treatment. So, you know, I just kind of want to put that out there that this isn't a replacement for veterinary care. This is an addition to. Okay, so what is a herb garden? Now, for me, the way that I use the term a herb garden is to describe what you can see here. It's a blanket or a towel or a mat and you put it down somewhere in the home. Now, placement of this is quite important. So as much as we're humans and we love to be interactive and see what's going on with our animals because you know we love them with all of our heart all of our hearts for a herb garden it's really important that it's placed in a quiet area of the home so because cats are a predator and a prey animal they're generally i'm going to generalize through this talk on high alert you know or, or they're on alert so they're looking for things they're looking to see what's going to be a threat to me where do i get food you know, that, that, which is their basic survival instinct. So cats are always kind of aware, you know, aware. Now, people say like curiosity killed the cat. I don't like that phrase personally, because cats aren't curious, they're alert. They have to be because their ultimate drive is to survive. Right. So they have to look out for what's going to affect them. They have to keep aware, keep be aware of what's going on in their environment. Now, some cats will be up high, some cats will be, you know, sort of under beds, but they are watching what's going on. So mm -hmm. when a cat uses a herb garden, they heal. Whether it's physical, mental, emotional, it doesn't matter, they heal. Now, in order to heal, a cat has to be vulnerable. I'm just going to say that again. For a cat to heal, it has to be vulnerable. So if you're a predator and a prey animal and you're always on alert, how are you going to go to just being, you know, aware and, and watching to like chilled out and, you know, enjoying your herbs? It's, it's not going to happen just like that. We've got to create that environment for them. So what I say to people 
is find a nice quiet spot in the home. So for example, our herb garden for Leo is in the corner of our dining room. It's not a room we use very much. It is attached to our front room. So we go in occasionally, but it's kind of, you know, tucked away in the corner so he can go there as and when he chooses. It's not in the hallway. It's not in the kitchen. You know, it's not in our front room. It's not somewhere where there's heavy foot traffic or a lot of family members go. It's somewhere that he can take himself away and be quiet and be calm and enjoy the remedies. So as a human, you know, if we have a massage or a, a nice spa treatment, the last thing we want is for, you know, people to walk in and out of the room and chatting in the corner. And, you know, we, we want to have the nice quiet ambiance, don't we? And it's, yeah, and it's exactly the same for cats. So placement is crucial. Think about a nice quiet spot where you can put your towel or your mat, whatever you decide to choose in a nice quiet space for the cat to enjoy. That's step one. Okay, so step two is you get your remedies. Now, I sell herb gardens from my shop in the Naturally Cats website. They're all prepackaged. You know, I do 10 different gardens with little bags of herbs that come with it. So you've got it already made. You can get them online. What I would say is be cautious and get organic where you can. Now, the reason for that is sometimes cats will ingest a remedy. So let's talk about rosebuds, for example. Rosebuds are used in like potpourri, in like, you know, soap making, cosmetics, you know. They can be falsely perfumed. They can be, you know, sprayed with, with chemicals to make them smell nice. Mm -hmm. So get, get organic where you can, because if the cat decides to crunch on that rosebud to release the scent molecules, you know, to enjoy the, the remedy more, they're potentially going to ingest some toxins if you've not got organic. All right. So it, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it is definitely worth getting organic where you can. So I have a I have 20 different herbs in my shop. And we've got, like I said, we've got 10 gardens. And what you do is you basically you get a good pinch. Now I mean like not a little pinch of salt you'd put in your dinner. Mm -hmm. I, I mean like, you know, half a handful, a, a really good amount. You know, if you look which picture if you look at the one in the bottom in the bottom with the red blanket that's matt with a gorgeous little smile on his face with his closed eyes his fluffy ears mm -hmm. he sat with some lavender now look it's not a tiny pinch you know it's a really yeah. good it's a, it's a good little mound for him to enjoy so don't be stingy with your herbs you know put a good amount down a good tablespoon or so mm -hmm. and you put one in each corner that's that's how i use it you can put more down. Some people put more down. But for me, I think it has the potential to overwhelm the cat, you know, so I would I would rather go slow and have, say, four remedies at a time rather than any more. You can always put a second mat down somewhere else in the house with a different different fall down. Now, how the cat will work with the remedies depends on each individual cat and also depends on their current state. So as I mentioned before, if you've got a cat that's just had an operation, for example, I don't know, they they injured their leg, so they fractured their leg, and you put some valerian down, you might find the cat will sit near it. It might do what Juvia is doing on the top on the top picture with the white tummy and the tabby legs stretched out on on the blanket on the mat. You might find the cat will rub and roll around. You know, it might kind of mix it all up and and just be with every remedy. Mm -hmm. You might also find that the cat, as I said before, will ingest it. Now, that is because they need the healing properties of whatever the remedy is, like quicker. They, they need it more intensely. So when cats are working with a herb garden, as we know, every plant has, has smelly bits, shall we say. It has scent molecules. That's the word I was looking for. All right. And if you think about a fresh rose, it smells gorgeous, doesn't it? it smells divine. Yeah. Such a such a lovely perfume. Mm -hmm. Now, when you dry plants, the 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 chemical the chemical properties of that plant will change. So, you know, an essential oil, which is a really concentrated version of the plant essence. So, for example, rose oil, it takes you know hundreds, if not thousands, of roses to get a bottle of essential oil, and that's because obviously, you know, you when you crush the petals for example you get the oil on your fingers or the scent on your fingers mm -hmm. now when plants are dried that chemical makeup that ke those chemical components they change but what happens is they're still there but in a softer form now this is a bit of the science bit so 
because cats are so sensitive, they use the, the properties of the herb garden through usually through inhalation. They also use essential oils mostly through inhalation, but that's a whole other topic that we'll cover another time. <laughs> so you will generally see a cat sit near, sit next to, sit on the herb or flower. Mm -hmm. They might sniff at it and walk past it, or they might rub and roll around in it. Like I said, occasionally they will ingest it. And the reason they're doing that is because the scent molecules that would normally kind of go up their nose into the brain, the limbic sy system affect the body. They need it internally. They need it quicker into their body. They need it in their stomach to go into the, their, their digestion system or into their bloodstream. You know, and like I said, it's usually when they've got a chronic issue, um, an acute issue. So, they, you know, they've, they've broken their leg um, or there's an, uh, you know, an emotional problem. But every cat is different, just like every human. So, you know, some humans like to have a hug, other humans, not so much. Mm -hmm. And with cats and with their herb gardens, there's a real variety of ways that they'll interact. So the picture in the middle at the top, that was a cat at a rescue center. Now, if you think about a rescue center, highly stressful environment for a cat. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of uncertainty, a phenomenal amount of smells for them. So they're going to be really overwhelmed, probably highly stressed, highly anxious, highly strung. So I, I would be very surprised if a cat at a rescue center would just sort of sit near a herb garden. It's likely that they will rub and roll around to work with the remedies really quickly, you know, really intensely. But the personality of the cat can also affect how they interact with the remedies. So if you've got quite a confident cat, you know, I mentioned about, you know, needing to feel safe to heal. Some cats will rub and roll around. Some cats like Seppi at the bottom with the white feet, ginger cat. He mixed up all those herbs. They were in gorgeous little piles in each corner. He mixed them all up so that he could be amongst it all. You know, whereas some cats on the top right with George, just a bit of a sniff at the corner and then he walks on by because that's all he needs. Okay. So each cat will work with the remedies differently. Each cat will interact with them differently. And actually some cats may also take a few days to, to interact with them. So uh, I worked with a client, a cat called Sunshine, and it took him five days to interact with his herbs because he was cautious. He was a very, very cautious cat. But after, you know, he, they are now his go-to whenever he experiences a vet, which comes to their house um, or his mum has their housekeeper, he goes straight onto his herb garden to, to use the herb to support his emotional and mental well-being. So it's, it's phenomenal, right? It is something that is really easy to do. You can help their physical issues, their emotional state. So, you know, like anxiety, depression, sadness, grieving, um, you know, anxiety. It, it's, it, it's great for mental health issues with cats. And like I said, emotional state is kind of like the other flip side of that. Um, we've got one in our dining room and actually, you know, we have it down all the time. So I consider a herb garden just as crucial as a litter tray just as crucial as a scratching post because we need to give our cats the opportunity to self-soothe to enjoy the herbs to enjoy the healing properties as and when they need to you know who am I to say when Leo needs to, to work with some rose who am I to say when Leo needs to work with some valerian you know that's 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 up to him I'm just trying my best to give him the opportunity to do so as and when he needs it really so just to wrap us up, what, which herb do you use, right? What, what do you do? So I have kind of probably about five, four or five herbs that are my go-tos, which I'll share with you all to get you kind of started. So I trained for two years to use remedies with cats because it's quite an unusual topic. There's a lot out there for dogs, you know, and there was, um, and there wasn't much for cats. So when I, when I saw this uh, feral mum with the kittens work with a herb garden, I was just blown away, which is why I think it became such a passion for me to educate and support guardians to learn about how to use herbs with their cats. So I co-wrote, like I said at the beginning, co-wrote the aromatic cat and in there there's 40 profiles for different remedies. We talk about essential oils, hydrosols and herbs. And we also talk about what each property, uh, what each remedy will help. So for example, I use the uh, rose again. We talk about how that can help physical issues and emotional issues. Um, so it's a really good guide to help you learn which ones, which remedies to offer. 
but for me I would say if you if you want to just try any you know I've got a general garden that you can get from my shop at naturallycats.co.uk or like I said head online get some organic herbs now valerian for me is always my top my top top herb it's not actually catnip so only about 60 to 70 percent of cats are affected by catnip because they react to a component in it whereas for me valerian is selected so much more than catnip because valerian like i said it has physical and emotional support properties so i would say get yourself some organic valerian root and then i love chamomile so you know for humans they say if you're stressed have a chamomile tea chamomile works exactly the same for cats as well so you know you can offer some dried chamomile roman or german it doesn't matter put it down on the garden see if they if they like to work with it see if they use it they rub on it roll on it sit next to it it's going to help to calm them down if they want it so valerian chamomile the calendula would be my next one which is uh, mar- also known as marigold and for me calendula is wonderful because it's like the little flower heads they're bright orange you know it's like bringing a little bit of sunshine indoors so particularly if you've got an indoor only cat you know, obviously offering cat grasses to use fresh cat grasses so they can support their, their digestion, but also putting down a herb garden brings a little bit more of the kind of outdoors indoors for them. Right. And then finally, I would say probably, probably lavender or, or that's a tough one. I, I would maybe say Angelica root, actually. I changed my mind. So Angelica root opens the cat up to healing. And that's essentially what we want. We want them to feel comfortable. We want them to be able to lean into the supportive tools, you know, the the herbs that we're putting down for them. So I'd say Angelica root. Now, what I would say is ultimately you can't get it wrong, right? If you get some herbs online and, you know, like I said, try and get organic where you can. If you get some herbs and you put them down and your cat does nothing with it, don't panic. What that means is, You've not done it wrong. It just means that in that moment, your cat doesn't need that herb. But try it two weeks later. Try it a month later. You know, put it down again. Because with a herb garden, it's about what does my cat need in this moment? And as I said, we don't always know that. So just try it. As long as you're using self-selection principles, which means you put it down, you let the cat choose. They will tell you, they will show you what they need. So never add to food. This isn't a nutritional supplement. This isn't, you know, this isn't something to support their diet. Like I said at the beginning, there is no nutritional value in this. This is about the effect on the emotional, mental, physical, spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. So put it down, let your cat choose and enjoy. I I could watch a cat on a herb garden all day, every day. You know, I've I've got customers reaching out to me, showing me pictures of their cats. And my heart just melts. It really does. You know, I I could watch a cat interact with herbs all the all day, every day, because it's so beautiful to see oh, how they are using that. their natural ability to, to choose, to, to heal themselves. I think, you know, it's it's just phenomenal. So that's that's the end of my talk. And I know Ben's got a few more questions. So if you're interested to find more about Naturally Cats or how to work with your cat, you can find me online. My website's naturallycats.co.uk, on Facebook and Instagram. And you can always email me info at naturallycats.co.uk. There we go. Back to you, you lovely host. (laughs) Thank you. That was so mind blowing. And yeah, it's very, very, very interesting. And uh, there are a lot of variables to to consider. And um, yet, I guess it really just boils down to how we become more mindful and sensitive sensitive to our to our cats. And um, yeah, and um, I like what you said about um, yeah self selection that you're you can't get it wrong. Your cat will guide you. It's it's such a marvelous thing to to know. And um, yeah, it for for beginners can we uh, can they really um try this themselves like with a self study or do beginners uh, need some guidance from an expert such as yourself? No, or- beginners, give it a go right just get a get a towel or a blanket put it in a quiet space get some organic herbs that's that's all you need to do if they want to know more about which herb helps which thing you know which if, if there's a particular concern physical or emotional with the, with their cat yes they're going to need a little bit of education so the aromatic cat book has all of that we talk about 
um, you know, over grooming, inappropriate toileting. Uh, we've, we talk about, like I said, oils or herbs. Um, but, you know, it's a quick reference guide. It's really easy to use format so rather than doing like you know I said I did a two-year training course now again if you want to learn more absolutely it's a fabulous topic self-selection is fascinating and when you learn more about how cats do it what to look for how to support them it is mind-blowing so you know just start off simple you know get some get a few herbs like I said valerian calendula chamomile you know maybe peppermint I mean, peppermint generally helps, to, like it for humans, helps to soothe the tummy, helps to cool the body. So if your cat's particularly aggressive or there's an issue with digestion, try try you know putting down peppermint. Um, it, the worst thing that's going to happen is the cat won't use it. You know, and like I said, that doesn't mean they won't use it again. It just means in that moment, that's not what they need. But leave it down. You know, I leave my herb gardens down for at least a week. And then, you know, Leo's got the choice to interact with it or not. You know, it's up to the cat. I love it. And um, thank you for breaking that down. And uh, that really sounds like a, a cat spa to the next level. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to implement that myself. I think my cats are going to love it. I have seven cats that I'm taking care of right now with me. And um, yeah, when I, the thing is, I might uh, be tempted to just uh, snuggle with them and <laughs> try it myself. Can I have my own herb garden too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a great, that's a great point, actually. So if you've got more than one cat, try, you know, it's, it's like litter trays, one herb garden per cat, you know, so what, what you'll probably find will happen, particularly in multi-cat homes, there's always some form of tension, right? It's, it might not be all the time, there might be a lot of snuggling and, and you know, sort of co-grooming and things, but there will be tension. And what you'll find is when you've got a multi-cat home, you don't want to, to introduce a fight for the herbs, you know, like you said, they're going to want to chill out and enjoy it. So, you know, put down more than one, one garden, and, and actually, it's a second good point you made, Burns, about when you when you're watching the cat on the garden, it's really we, we are loving beings, right? We want to stroke them and, and, you know, give them, oh, good boy. And words of like reinforcement or encouragement. But it's actually really important just to take a step back, because when your cat's healing in that moment, as like I said before, they're, they're vulnerable. So even if you've got the deepest relationship in the world, your cat, may, <coughs> excuse me your cat may stop working with the herbs to come and have cuddles because they want to give you love and attention. So when your cat is working with the herb garden, take a step back and just watch. And actually, like I said, enjoy that beautiful moment where you know you've provided something for them to help them heal and just watch and enjoy them. Enjoy them in that moment. Yeah, watch and control yourselves because it might be really something beautiful. It, yeah, I mean, cats are really cute themselves. I mean, this is just looking at them. It really um, would make would make our heart heart melt. And uh, yeah, and uh, I can just I can imagine um, how beautiful it is. And um, I believe that uh, for pet owners, I think this is also true for both um, uh, cat owners and dog owners. Um, caring for themselves is really vital, so that they can also take care of their pets. So, what advice or or tips can you give to pet owners and how to best care for themselves for the sake of their pets? Absolutely. And I'm really, really glad you brought that up because our health and well-being is, is crucial. In this day and age, there is so much input coming into us, you know, emotionally, energetically, mentally. And I think, you know, because like I said at the beginning, you know, we brought our cats indoors. So they have to deal with the Wi-Fi in the home, our energy in the home, our crazy lives. So for me, it is just as important to take care of ourselves. Now, something that I do again with my community is called a calm connection. And I'm going to do it live with you here. So I say to people, you know, let's take a minute, right? This is all it's going to take. And I invite people, we're going to do it. So make sure you do it too, Burns, you know, because the audience will be part of this. Hi. So I invite you to close your eyes. So I'm going to check, close your eyes. Okay. Okay. And then you take a nice deep breath in. And out. You put your left hand on your heart space. Another deep breath. And out. And then your right hand's on your tummy or just below your belly button. Another deep breath. And 
and just sit for a moment with your eyes closed, your hands on your body and just breathe. Allow the breath to flow naturally. Feel your body under your hands. Feel the chair underneath your body. And just breathe. Take a deep breath if you feel drawn to do so or otherwise just letting the breath flow. And bringing your hands down together in your lap, nice deep breath. Open your eyes when you're ready. So that took us a minute, literally I clocked it. And I don't know about you, and I can tell because my energy's kind of calmed down because I was getting all excited with the talk. I feel calmer. Now that's just a moment, it's just a minute. And I know we're all super busy, but if you can just take a moment just to catch your breath, you know, you don't have to do your five things you're grateful for or journal for 10 minutes or meditate for half an hour. All those things are great. And if you can, and you've got capacity, do it. But if you can just catch your breath, you know, you're stood in the kitchen, you go to make a cuppa, you're waiting for the kettle to boil, just close your eyes and breathe. I think that's very, very powerful. It shifts our energy, it shifts our vibration and it shifts our emotion as well. So that would be one of my top tips to people because looking after ourselves will affect, will directly impact our cats for sure. Wow, thank you. How are you feeling? I love what you said and I love that exercise. I'm surprised that you gave us an exercise like that. And that I, I definitely feel calmer after that. And um, I guess it's really um, about the, uh, the power of the now. We, we just did it for just one minute. And yep. It's really, really, um, yeah, very calming. And yeah, just being in that present moment, just doing the breathing and all. And uh, it's it's amazing that the, really the, the power of being present. Yeah. Really there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite questions. Now, from your perspective as a holistic cat therapist, um, how can cat parents or cat, cat guardians be the key to their cat's happiness? Mm -hmm. I would say we have to look, have to look at our own happiness first <laughs> oh, so yeah. I, it comes back to, to the energetics for me you know and the emotions so when we finished work and we're really stressed you know and we've had a bad day or things haven't gone well what do we do we go to our pets because we want comfort we want you know cuddles affection and, you know, I think at times we can put a lot of emotional pressure on our animals. So I would say that we need to to make sure we're doing we're practicing self-care and that's different for everyone. And that's OK. Obviously, there are things there are the practical things, you know, resources. What what litter trays have you got? What cat trees? You know, what enrichment? And there's always more. There's always more to do when it comes to that side of it, which is why I think for me, that's like secondary mm -hmm. because. I can always add another cat tree. I can always add another scratching post. You can never have too many, right? You can, you know, your house may be covered in cat paraphernalia, but you'll, you can never have too much, too much stuff, you know, for cats to use for their interaction, to support their environmental needs. But with us, we, we can flip, you know, we can be one end of the emotional spectrum or the other or somewhere in between within like a five minute space. And for our cats to be around that energetic change, can be intense so I would invite people the next time they've had a bad day or a bad email or a difficult phone call or interaction with another human to do that breath just take a breath before you go to your animal because they are wonderful beings who will take our energy and our emotions because they're like they're like um what's the word they, they can train they can transmute the energy they can change the energy they can take it from us and give it back to the universe you know and mm -hmm. I think we need to be mindful of how much pressure we put on our animals to support us emotionally so I would really advocate that people prioritize their self-care and then that will eventually you know lead to a, a happier healthier cat wonderful and that is gold and I guess it really boils down to sometimes selfishness is really a higher form of selflessness 
because when we really care for ourselves, it's really how we present ourselves to others, I mean, not just to, to our animals, but also to other people. And uh, yeah, most especially to, to animals, it's because I mean, as pet owners, and I believe that most of the audience will agree because we're really here for them. And uh, yeah, they're really like angels and they're really very pure. And sometimes I, like myself, um, yeah, sometimes I really can't go near them if I'm not okay. I mean, sometimes I really just have to, you know, just take a minute and just, you know, just try to um, recondition myself and yeah, just be okay before I approach them or go near them. Because uh, I believe that my energy would really affect them and everything is really about energy and yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and just to, on, just to, you know, on that um, uh, point on what you just said before we wrap up, you know, self-care isn't selfish. And I'm not saying that's what you said. I'm just saying that's what we're kind of conditioned to believe. Self-care isn't selfish self-care is essential self-care is crucial and we we you know society doesn't really lend to that belief as much we're, we're starting to morph that way with you know the birth of mindfulness and meditation becoming more popular but the old adage of you know when you're on an airplane if it's going down put your gas your own gas mask on first or oxygen mask on first life is like that you know if we don't look after ourselves we won't be able to look after our cats. So it's irrelevant what we're doing for them in a way, unless we're looking after ourselves, you know, and for those cat guardians out there, cat mums and cat dads who sacrifice themselves for their cats. I admire that, you know, I do that at times because I love my boys so much that I will put them before me. And that's okay sometimes, but I'm saying, you know, and sometimes people need to hear it, but it's okay to put yourself first. You know, if you need to heal, if you need some something that will support your mental health or your emotional well-being, and the cats may have, you know, 10 minutes less playtime, sometimes that's okay. It's, it's all about trying to find what works in the moment. I'm not going to use the word balance, you know, because I think as cat mums and dads, we can feel sometimes guilty about putting ourselves first. But there are times when it's needed and it's okay to do it it's got to be about what feels right as a cat mum or a cat dad for you in that moment which comes back to what you said burns about that that present that being in that present moment what feels right now do I want to put my boys first do I need to put me first and make a choice in that moment wonderful and uh, yeah um, any final thoughts or have you covered everything already gosh you know I said to you I could talk about cats all day long um <laughs> I, I don't think there were I, I don't think there are final thoughts. I would just like to share with everybody that it's okay to struggle sometimes. You know, it's okay to feel that you're not doing enough, but we are, we are all doing the best that we can in each moment. And I would really encourage people to, to do the breath work for a minute, even if it's three deep breaths and you're off to the next thing. Be kind to yourself is my, is my takeaway that I hope people, you know, um, can embrace be kind to yourself as you go about your day. Be kind to yourself so that you can give more. Because when we're kinder to ourselves, our capacity for love and connection with our cats can be phenomenal. Try a herb garden. You know, you can't get it wrong. The worst that can happen is they won't use it. And then that's not a bad thing, but they may use it another time. So, you know, get yourself some herbs, take a deep breath and enjoy your cats. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm trying to hold back the tears. I'm trying to become teary eyed right now. And then, yeah, I love everything you said. It, I'm really touched by by what you what, what you're sharing and uh, by what you do. So um, yeah, for our audience, if you have a free offer in mind, anything that you can share with us, uh, do you have any links or where they can find you? Yeah, sure. So you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Naturally Cats, and also on YouTube. On YouTube, you can catch some of my webinar replays that we did for free, um, some Christmas workshops that we did about five days, you know, five ways to help your cats. There's all sorts on our YouTube channel. And if you go to my website, which is www.naturallycats.co.uk, my shop is on there. So in the shop tab, you can find a signed copy of the Aromatic Cat Book. You can look at our herb gardens. And um, on the home page of my website, if you scroll down slightly, you'll get a little pop up box. And there you can get my you can download my free ebook, uh, which is called Quick Start Guide to Cat Care. So 
It's a really brief introduction as to what to consider with your cat. Doesn't matter if you've had your cat for five years, I'm sure you'll still learn something from it. So feel free to head on to, over to my website, get the free download and uh, have a look and see if you fancy, you know, investigating self-selection a little bit more with a signed copy of the book or a herb garden. All right. All right, uh, everyone, we're going to put the uh, links in our page and in our email. So watch out for that. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Julianne, for being part of this and for making this project even more special and a little hands on. And uh, I appreciate the knowledge and experiences that you shared. I hope you can also join us again in the future. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Burns, for asking me to be part of this summit. I think you've done a phenomenal job. The topics that you've covered, it's really, really great to see people talking about, you know, the, the wide range of how we can support our animals. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Absolutely happy to come back and, ch and chat again. And thank you very much for having me. And thank you to the audience who've been part of this summit. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you've got any questions about our topic today, feel free to reach out and get in touch. All right, it's an honor for me to, to take on such a project. And yeah, giving cats a voice, I love that. And uh, everyone, um, I sure hope that this show has provided value and meaning for you. And um, I hope it has helped you learn more about how to simply, easily, and compassionately keep your pet healthy and happy. So um, I wish you so much love, so much health and joy with your pets. And uh, we'll see you around for updates and uh, watch out for that. So uh, bye for now and uh, lots of love. Hug your pets and love them. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank I you, am. Julianne. <laughs> My pleasure.